Thank you. Um, we'll make sure everybody takes their seat. And uh, Billy, if you'd like to take attendance, actually, we know now that everybody's here. <laughs> we just did it. So everybody is present. Um, we, you have the um, membership meeting minutes of May 26th before you. So if you'll please read them, kind of let me know um, that you're done. <laughs> Yeah, and did you want to assign microphones? Sorry, what? Assign microphones front and back. Um, right. So I could, we can use the black microphones. In, in the back? Okay. Well, yeah, front and back, as long as only mic is, is used up front. Yeah, you can have both of the black microphones. Okay, do we have volunteers? We need a, a couple of volunteer microphones in the audience. So we get two people to volunteer, then we will. Jennifer's got one, and somebody else had their hand up. Teresa. You you use this, right? Right. Dang, I'm going to try to explain this to the audience. Are we done reading? Everybody seemed to be okay. Any additions, corrections, or deletions to the minutes? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes as submitted, please raise your hand. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Uh, John? If you would like to explain the camera setup. Okay, everybody, this is something new and so far it's working. 
we have two cameras working at the same time and I'm recording both of them over Zoom and I'm also live streaming it to YouTube. So anyone who isn't here or if you want to come back later, it'll be on the YouTube and there'll be linked from the website, Garden Gazette. And uh, we're going to have two microphones. Uh, they have to coordinate with each other and uh, we want to get people to speak into the microphone because uh, we're recording it and it's easier for everyone to hear. There's two speakers, one here, one there. And I'm also using a backup recorder just in case the Zoom fails me. So we should be in good shape. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So prior to the meeting, someone needs to click on to Zoom or after the fact to see the meeting. Okay. Right now, it is. It, you can. Right now, you could watch it on Zoom, but I did not publicize it. So it, so you have, you, 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 I'm kind of taking this in baby steps. The next step might be to promote the idea that if you can't come to the meeting, you can go to the Zoom. But I wanted to make sure this was working before I got people involved in that aspect. But, but you can be watched live on the Zoom and it can be watched uh, after the fact on YouTube. So. The difference is if you're watching it on Zoom, you know, it, there's no way for you to comment during the meeting or to vote. So that's the one thing you have to, you know, keep in mind. But for some people, you know, they may, because for whatever reason, they can't come, you know, to a particular meeting, they still may want to participate by Zoom, which I think is great. So it's still kind of a learning process for us, but John's making progress with everything that we've, um, excuse me, that we've talked about over the last few months. So we'll keep going. Treasurer's report. The treasurer's report as of the end of May, um, you probably noticed that uh, we're always, uh, seems like we're a month late, but these the reports go as of the end of the last, the last months, uh, because that's when the bank statements are reconciled. So as it, uh, in May, we had uh, a bank balance of uh, 500, well, 5,471.14. And we had uh, total expenses of 257.84. And in May, we didn't have any revenue. So we had a um, negative income of the 257.84. And on the back side of the Treasury report is the uh, the state of the uh, the finances, actual versus budget. The year to date, January 1 through May 31st. And the one thing that uh, um, we did do, we did, uh, did adjustment of uh, writing off the IOUs per the uh, um, resolution that we had last month. Um, the, some of the IOUs we believe will be received when they come in, we will then book them as an income rather than a accounts receivable. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those in favor of accepting the treasurer's report and submitted, please raise your hand. Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. I had a, I sent an invitation directly to the mayor about uh, 10 days ago, asked for a response by the 15th. They managed to get back to me yesterday, uh, trying to make the schedule that I asked for, which is the next week, the 28th. I think that's Wednesday. Um, and I asked for a response today because we need to plan, but I did not get a response. So, but there is a possibility that next Wednesday, um, the mayor will be here. So just watch the bulletin board, um, because that's, you know, anyway, it's going to be an open discussion with the mayor. He knows what he's coming to and the issues that we have both as a community and with our occupants across the street. So nothing is going to come as a surprise to him, um, but just, you know, keep your conversation um, positive <laughs> as much as you can. Um, but he has answers and we should be able to get some answers. I also got a call from um, 
wash dot um, about 10 days ago um, and a boilerplate email that some of you saw. Um, and I called him, I, I, in fact, when I got that and I knew that that was just boilerplate information and it wasn't really very accurate, I sent him an email that didn't say anything other than call me. And he called me about 20 minutes later. So we had quite a lengthy discussion that day about, you know, the overall situation across the street. Um, even though he has some history, he didn't have some of the information that I was able to give him. But what I also gave him was the history of us on this property, the length of time we've been here, and how many times we've been through the situation across the street, and that they can't pull the wool over our eyes. We know the rules, we know who's how the game is played, we know who's in charge where, and we know where the money is. So they have answers that they owe us based on that, and that I wanted him here for a meeting. And so he said he would come for a meeting, and um, and I told him, I said, the meeting will probably be a bit not hostile, but it might be a bit negative. And I said, and you should be prepared. He said, well, I'm not coming alone. And I said, I don't expect you to come alone. I expect a few other people to be with you. And um, so anyway, we got through the conversation, but most of it was about, you know, the BS done with as far as this property goes. We know too much. We've been through it. So anyway, yesterday um, he called me to apologize. Um, because he had not gotten the meeting scheduled yet. And I found that polite and nice that he did that. Um, and we talked a little bit more about a couple of things that have happened since the first conversation to the last one. And that um, I said, well, when do you expect to have the meeting? He said, well, probably not till, you know, right after the 4th of July. And I said, okay. I said, that's reasonable. You've got people that you have to schedule. Um, that's acceptable. But I said, we're only talking a couple of days after the 4th of July. I said, I'm not talking anything after that. And he goes, well, maybe around the 6th or the 7th. I said, that's just fine. Let's keep those dates in mind. I said, we're not going to keep saying you're coming and then you're not, but you're coming and you're not. I said, that's not how we play the game. So he's supposed to get back to me on Monday with um, the date. And I told him the time didn't matter. We would make the time fit to their schedule. They can come in the morning. We'll do the morning. If you can't come till the afternoon, we'll do the afternoon. It doesn't matter. Um, but again, I reminded him, you know, you have, you have questions to answer for us because I said, we know that there's $50 million in a pot just for the properties that run along the freeways. And I said, so you're going to have to explain to us why that money is not being utilized. And if it is, how? And then he tried to tell me that um, um, his information was some of what was in the boilerplate email. Again, that the resource people have been over there several times a week for some time. And I'm going, you know, I'm not calling you a liar. But what I am going to say to you is I don't think that the information that you're getting is accurate. Do you get the actual reports? And he said, no. And I said, well, therein lies the problem. Because somebody's telling you something that's not necessarily true. I said, we have eyes on that place 24-7 practically. And we would know if there were people coming in and out of there on a regular basis doing that particular type of work. And he says, well, they kind of try to blend in because, you know, they're trying to get they're trying to get to know the people. And I said, that's just crap. They don't need to get to know these people. They need to provide the services and the housing and get that property cleaned up. Those are the things that need to be done. And you don't have to build a new mousetrap when you go to another encampment. You've already built the mousetrap. And you should have housing already available. That's what that money is for. And I said, so I still ask that when you come to meet with us, you have read the reports because I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is probably more accurate than what they're telling you. So he was going to see what he could do to actually find out the facts about that. And I said, well, I think it's a really good idea. These people deserve those answers. Absolutely. So we kind of left it at that. So hopefully he will, you know, let me know on Monday. So you should hopefully see this stuff on the July calendar. And, oh, and then we talked about the length of time to clear up camp again. And he goes, well, it's not going to be real fast. And I said, look, 
I said, we understand what it takes to do this. Who's every went back through the same deal. And I said, but we're not, he says, well, we're only talking maybe one or two months. And I said, again, if you're honestly talking one or two months, we can deal with that if it's accurate. And we will help in whatever way this community can help. But I said, if you're talking longer than that, that's not acceptable. And I said, and you might as well prepare for it because we will find other means to take care of it. Well, and he goes, well, that's what we're looking at. And I said, well, good. Then I hope you can have some more solid information when you come to the meeting. So, and I told him that we had a meeting tonight that I'd be passing this information on. I said, so people will be prepared with whatever information you've given to me. And they're gonna expect, you know, that I've given them accurate information. So anyway, that's kind of where we are with that. Um, I, I'm trying to look at it as glass half full, not glass half empty, um, that we're making progress. The fact that he called me and then returned a call, I thought was, was good. So we'll see what happens, but let's try to, you know, keep working on it. But, you know, keep Jack, it, it, there's no comments that need to be made on this, Dan. But anything that you see that you should be, reported please pick up the phone and report it gunshots there were the other last night again gunshots if you hear the gunshots call 911 you don't have to know where they're coming from you only have to make the call every report that you make is recorded and it's in our favor so if you heard the gunshots last night and you didn't call and you hear the gunshots tonight do call. It only takes a second to make that call. And you give them whatever information you have, whether it's a little bit or a lot. Okay. And and like I said, if you're not sure what you're hearing before, you know, you go to sleep tonight, well, it's still maybe quiet. Try to remember what the sound of a backfiring car sounds like and what the sound of fireworks sound like. Okay. If you re try to remember those, that a gunshot is a totally distinctive sound. It doesn't sound like either one of those things. So when you hear it, just try to stop for a minute and say, what did I hear? And if you believe it was bullets from guns and you don't rapid fire a backfire of a car, you don't rapid fire um, <laughs> fireworks, um, and we've had a bit of automatic fire gun play over there. So, but I said, don't hesitate to call thinking that somebody else may, might have done that. Every call counts. So helping us helps the whole situation. Okay. Um, Ansley and Wash Dot, okay. <laughs> We got everything set up for the 4th of July, except volunteers. We'll need a few for that day. Um, I went down and ordered the hot dogs, so I don't have to go down and buy more than one kind this year. So I ordered them ahead so they'll be ready when I pick them up on the 3rd. Um, and it's just a regular hot dog salad, salad pop, things like that. Nothing special. Um, dinner on the deck. Thanks to Shelly. That's been a lot of fun. And um, except for so except for the fourth Sunday of the month, which is karaoke, dinner on the deck at 530. You bring if you haven't been doing it, there's been a sign in the elevator. It's bring your own dinner and you may bring something for the sharing table, which is the counter. And we just sit outside and sit around for a couple hours. And it's been really a lot of fun. Thanks for getting that started again, Shelly. Um, Norman Bolden's last party was a blast. Thank you, everyone who contributed to his gift. I don't think he's still over that. It was a big surprise, but it was a lot of fun. And for those who don't know, where is Teresa Flores? Is she here? No, oh, she had to leave. She is our new DJ. And, and you'll, the signs that go up for her next one will be under DJ Sunshine because that's what she's chosen for her name because she's our sunshine person now uh, let's see july 17th is um personal safety class put on by the um seattle police department um it'll be on the july calendar this cost has been done here probably three times um uh, before it's a great class it's about 90 minutes i think but it's really good. Jennifer will be here to do it again. 
Um, so if you haven't taken the personal safety class, it's really worth it. Um, September 11th will be coffee with a cop again. Um, they were kind of apologizing for what happened on the 5th of July, but they got a big call just before er, when everybody was headed down here. So the three people that were already here didn't have to leave. And then when Jane Dorr and Chris Harding, the CSOs who are out in the North End, realized what happened and we weren't going to have everybody here, they headed here on their own and came to help out, which was really nice. Chris Harding is the CSO who will be back again, I think, in August, I, but I, I don't think he's given me a date, um, to work with the vets again. He had 12 or 13 vets at the last meeting, and it was really, really good. He's able to help them with a lot of information. And he does that voluntarily, by the way. It's not part of his job. It's part of who he was before he became a CSO. Dan? I would like to ask a very four years ago oh what has this got to do with my report well let me finish anyway it turned out that women that are married to vets have rights yes and they're expected they're invited but, to the meetings right but i don't know what my i'm trying to find out what my rights are being that i was married to a vet and I can't get any answers. Okay. And ask Chris those questions, and he okay. may be able to help you with that. Okay. That's what I need. You know, know, was your husband receiving veterans' benefits? That's, I don't know. That's what I got to find out. Okay. He signed up for VA, but never went. Well, there, well, anyway, Chris can help you with yeah. that question. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I really believe that he can. <laughs> Yeah, there's been a couple of um, veterans, uh, widows who have who, that have come. Ha, have you come, B? This, have you come to visit with Chris when he's here? About okay. Oh, you might want to come next time. But there, yeah. Just he will. Yeah, we'll have a bulletin out again. Um, there's two smoking ashtrays that have been ordered. Um, hopefully, should ar arrive daily. That will go out um, front with. It's a big. You know, it's a big garbage can that has a sand thing at the top. So we can get rid of the, the damn cans along the bushes and stuff like that and could look a little nicer out there. And the silver and the silver chairs that are out there need to come back onto the property. They don't go out on the sidewalk for the smokers. So if anybody's out there, please bring those chairs back where they belong. Um, if you want chairs out there, they're cheap at Walmart. Um, the garage auditing is um, still going on, and I know that some people have been told they have to move their cars out of the garage because they're either not insured or properly licensed and that. So just so you know, that was part of the audit. So cars that have been in there for months and not been moved, you know, they look to see whether the license tab is accurate current and whether or not if it's not been moved, if that's current, if there's current insurance on it, because you can't be in the garage if you don't have those things. So make sure yours is up to date. Um, what if you see somebody that you know is not up to date? Then you can just tell the office. Say, have you checked this car? Yeah. Um, the recycling bin, Jackie has not gotten an answer from waste man management yet about the move of the recycle bin in the A garage. So she's waiting on that. Um, let's see. The office hours aren't going to change yet because once again, we lost an employee. For those of you who don't know, Ariel is gone as of last Friday. And that was really too bad. Um, but she has two 14-year-old twins and she's a single mom with no support. And you got to do what you got to do. You know, so when she found a better job with better pay, you have to move on. And that's too bad, but it happens. And um, I think I forgot to remind Jackie to go down and check the old bicycle room in the A um, garage, because we believe that the bicycles are not there, but we think there may be a bicycle rack in there. So we're gonna try to find that out. So there's that. Patrick, um, Patrick's bakery will be here sometime in August. He hasn't given me a date yet um, to do um, shave ice. 
We haven't had it for since the pandemic. And it's really a lot of fun and everybody enjoys it. Shave ice, Hawaiian shave ice. He comes up and does shave ice for hours. And um, that's good. So he's coming. Uh, we don't know. He hasn't given me. It'll be a Wednesday in August. Comes on a day that he doesn't have his uh, cafe open because he has, he comes and does it himself. Um, we have the suggestion box up, but we have to find somebody that has a genius way to lock that for us. And I haven't had time to talk to Frank. So if anybody has any marvelous ideas, see me after the meeting because um, we want to figure out how to put a lock on that. And uh, without ruining it, it's right around the corner. Uh, let's see what else. A um, couple things. When you sign up for something, and we've reminded you before, sign up and show up. If you don't show up, you know, take your name out of the books. Because especially for parties, you know, we give you the sign up sheets because that's what we have to use to plan for the budget is a head count. You can't buy food and everything else if you don't have an accurate head count. So for the um, Juneteenth, we had almost 20 people who didn't show up that signed up. And we had 24 people who showed up that hadn't signed up. And so if everybody who showed up, who signed up had showed up, 24 people would have gotten turned away. So we need to talk to our neighbors about that. We don't want to turn anybody away, but we want to make sure that we have enough food, you know, for everyone. And, and planning a party is, you know, it takes a bit of work. Um, the shopping and the planning and the cooking and whatever else is done, but without an accurate head count, it doesn't work. And 4th of July is not going to be any different. So those signs will be up in another week. So please Remind your friends and neighbors, if they're coming to the 4th of July, they need to put their name in the book. So we make sure that we've bought enough buns <laughs> and um, other things. Um, the same thing was with the COVID shots. We had 91 people who, show, who signed up for COVID shots, maybe a handful who didn't come, but we still managed to do 107 shots. Great news for that. But still, I prepared uh, Luis, you know, for a number greater than what was in the books, and he came prepared. Um, and there were, if I can put 10 people together, and I have got the list so I can contact those that didn't show up. If you have 10 people, he will come back and uh, take care of those that didn't. And he will be here on the day of the health fair um, on September 20th. And he will be doing flu shots that day. And if anybody needs shingle shots, he will also do them that day. So there will be two signups in the book. So if you need shingle shots, we'll bring them. And let's see what else. D Moore has um, another event on Tuesday. I believe the weather is supposed to be nice. So it should be a great night for her again. Um, it's a BYOB for snacks and whatever. And She'll be playing, and last time was great. She did 27 songs, which is unbelievable. I saw Diana Ross on Wednesday night. She did 20 songs, and I thought that was a lot. And then I realized, oh, Dee did 27, which is pretty amazing. So that's going to be fun. Um, I'm not sure what else. That may be kind of what I have. Yep. It's kind of what I have. Uh, I'm going next to building. Do you have something about my report? Yes. I have a question about the shingles shot. I just found out today through my doctor that uh, Medicare does not pay for that. So, um, and I do need one. You can get shingles in your eye blind. So I really am interested in getting one. So I have no idea, but I will find that question out before the sign-up sheet goes in the book. Okay. Yes. You can get shingles in any part of your body. Yeah. You. Shelly, is it about my report? Yeah. Then wait. Oh, it was about my Yeah, but that comes later. Oh, <laughs> We're just on my report. Okay. Any other questions with regard to what I've reported? Okay. Um, building rep reports. Who's doing one? Let's hear from building um, C. 
Yes. Building C had a party and um, 25 uh, signed up, but half showed up. But that was great. We, we still had fun. So um, I'm glad that uh, people showed up and they enjoyed themselves. Is this on the building rep report, Sue? Uh, how about Kent thoughts? How about later? Um, anybody, anybody from Building C that was at the party that wants to comment? Shelly? It was the best party I've ever been to in a very long time. Teresa was fabulous. It was so fun, you guys. I was challenged. I was nervous. I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to remember this stuff. And then I remembered the stuff and we got to know the people and the table. It was so creative. It was, and she was floating around happy and doing all this stuff. And it was wonderful. It was a great idea. That's great. Right. It's the same thing at the building parties as anything else. When you sign up, show up. And if you're not going to show up, take your name off the darn list. But you're missing out when you don't show up for a lot of these events, I'm telling you. Um, this is a very great property. Um, building D, you want to tell us about your plan? Yeah. Hi. Okay. So Katie and I, is Katie, you're back there, right? Oh, there you are. Uh, are having Katie and I are having a open house on uh, next Tuesday at two o'clock and we don't have a sign up sheet. We're just hoping, we're hoping that a lot of people will come. So if you're from Building D, please come. What? Building D Building D's party is next Tuesday at 2 p.m. You do have a sign in your elevator, right? Am I not? Am I not doing it right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm doing it right. Do you have something you want to say too? I I, I did. I took flyers around and put it on every door today. And we've got a, a flyer up in the elevator and in the uh, lobby. So, you know, it's very open-ended. We aren't going to have the <laughs> fun and games that, that C had. It's a hard act to follow, but but, so. but we're doing something and we want to meet everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think the building parties are great. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, Building A has already had their report in their party like a month or so ago. Beyond that, we had a party. We haven't had a party. Oh, never mind. Planned one yet either. Oh, well, that's. <laughs> Earth, our, building A is still in the works, and we do so many parties in Building A that I forget which one was the official. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're thinking. <laughs> We're thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, that's the end of the building uh, report. Okay, so Shelly, you had a question, and then um, Sue Paul, you had a question. Uh -huh. I can't remember when that vet was here last time. I was wondering if they're coming back because I had COVID. A lot of people had COVID and couldn't go. Well, I said, as soon as I have 10 names again, I can call Luis and he'll be back. Okay. So great. I will put another sign up. And okay. if we get 10 people signed up, he will, I will call him and he will come back. Okay. Not a problem. He's just great. I really like him. Thank you. You're welcome. Sue Paul, about animals. Um, because Shag and Cirque are no longer working together, Thanks to Brian. Um, Cirque was who got the vet here before. Um, and that's where the funds came from. So we can't get a vet, you know, the, even the, the mobile vet people to come here, you know, for free. That's the problem. So um, I was, I'm still trying to reach the group that came here before, but their, their calendar is loaded. So, but, you know, we're still working on it and hopefully we can find somebody to come here. 
and do pet stuff. Yes. Mark. Would that be for the wellness? Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. You'd have to take it to the wellness committee and, and see what they would think about it. I can't, you know, any, even answer to that. Um, but mostly what the wellness does is for every single resident here. And the shots are for every single resident here. Um, and those things, but pet back be for every single resident. That's that would be, I think, the hang up. But I'm still, you know, actually trying to see if we can't. There's a couple of mobile vets, and there's one that's extremely expensive, but it's not the ones that was here last. So, still working on it. Since I know CERP left, but supposedly they're still, why can't they help us with this? It's a different, yeah. So anyway, still something in the books. Um, and it would be nice um, to have them. And now there was something else I was going to bring up off my notes, and I don't remember what it was. I've lost my train of thought. Um, anything else under good of the order? Teresa. Yes. Um, I wrote a letter to Brian Park and um I went by on the loss of the RSC or on something else? On the on the um the letters that we were yes, uh-huh. And it came back and it said return to sender, insufficient address, unable to forward. Let me see that. So I checked it with the address that was on the minute notes, and I have it right. Yep, it's wrong. I mean, yeah. So it's not Tuckwilla International Boulevard. It's just International Boulevard. So the, the system reads that whole thing and throws it out because the address is wrong. Yeah. Just take the word Tuckwilla out, and it's got but you have to put it in a new envelope. Bobby. The last time I was here and you gave out the address for Brian Parks, you talked so fast that I got it all messed up. Can it was, talk, it was. Talk slow and tell me the correct address, please. All I was doing last time was repeating what was in everybody's copy of the minutes by name and address. But okay. can I have the envelope back really quick again for a second? I will give it to you again. It is Brian Park and it is Brian with a Y. His address is 14184 International Boulevard South. Should be Tuckwilla, should be 98168. Yeah, 98168. Thank you. Yes. But anyway, I still encourage you to write the individual letters to Brian explaining what you have lost by not having the RSCs on campus. It's the, the, the more personal you can be in that letter, the more it's going to help at the other end. So, um, because it was, it was his decision and his decision alone. Francis, and then Sue Paul, just one second. Go ahead, Francis. I did bring three bucks. I'll get to that in a minute. Oh, the cards. I, I brought cards again, three by five cards. Everybody that would like to write a card. You know, that, that looks you know, like a campaign. Okay. It's better if you take your own little tablet paper or your little paper and make it look as individual and personal as possible. If it gets a bunch of letters or on a three by five card or a postcard, it's going to look like a campaign. What we want it to look is genuine. Do you see the difference? No, I just I brought the cards so that people could write their own notes inside. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, got it. It's blank. Not, it's, you brought, it's a blank, you brought blank card. note cards. It's a blank note card. Got it. And people can open it up and write. Got it. Got it. You Thank you very much. I misunderstood you. But they're over there if anybody would like them. Um, well, we'll talk about the rest of it in a bit because okay. you, you have double purpose there, right? Sue Paul. Where are they? The resident service coordinator. You remember Mackenzie and Kelly and what was her name? Mona. 
they were the RSCs and they worked first they worked for the foundation and then the foundation became CERC. And then CERC has merged with another larger organization and it costs X amount of dollars per door to have those services. They need X amount of dollars. Brian only wants to pay X amount of dollars and they can't not meet in the middle. So that is the problem. As clear as I can make it with you and still be nice. Because, you know, believe it or not, Brian does many good things for us. This one I think is a terrible mistake. Sue, and then I'll get to you, Diane. Absolutely not. These people make $50,000 a year. Where are we going to pay them? Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you, Sue. <laughs> one of us wins the mega lottery. How far apart are they? Do you know? How far apart are what? In, in money. Way far apart. Yes, I do know. I'm not going to put that out here. Yes. See the mic? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I have a question about elevators. Just let me ask my question. Um, what is the reason that they can't put cameras in the elevators? I have no idea whether they, they can't or they won't or they haven't or they will. Uh, so there, there's no answer to that question. You'd have to direct that question at Jackie to see if that is in the plans. It's not that I am aware of. Okay. Thank you. I just yeah. wondered if there was a... No, I haven't heard anything about the elevators. Thank you. Yeah. But I know that the guys haven't been back yet to continue the um, installation of, of cameras. So um, I'm not sure where they are on that. Um, speaking of Jackie, um, washers and dryers, let me read you the, the, the note that she sent me. Even though we don't have the washer. Show me a note. Um, I think it was Wednesday. Nothing, just spread the word to all that all of the washers and dryers on this property are working. All of them that are here that have not already been, hang on, let me finish that are not up for repair, the ones that you said had broken down and are not working in addition to, okay? They are actually all working. She's going to send a blast to create a rule sheet of do's and don'ts, that's another thing. The tech said most of the issues were operator error and residents unplugging the machines. So we have people who are unplugging the machines deliberately when they are actually working. So, um, that is a problem. And he, he he had three of them that he had to do a quick fix on. And so they were up and running. And she still has not gotten a delivery date on the washers and dryers. And she's as frustrated as we are. And you can ask Frances, I asked her to write me something official for tonight's meeting. Because, you know, I've had some people jumping all over my can thinking that I am not following up on this. I follow up on it all the time to the point that Jackie is ready to scream at me. She's only doing so much. Um, we were hopeful last Friday when I was in the office and they called about how much money is supposed to be on the cards on this property. So she looked at that as a positive thing that they were getting ours ready to come and then nothing again. So it, it's, it's no fun at her end either. But if you see the machines unplugged again in your building, None of them should be unplugged that don't have the big ink out of order sign on them. There's a handwritten out of sign in order. That's somebody else writing it. Um, but, you know, I don't understand why we have any resident here. I mean, I know some of us think that we can point fingers at, at X, Y, Z, and we may or may not be right in what we think, but I don't understand the behavior of people who would do things like that, that actually harm us. You know, when you're forcing people to go up two and three and four flights of stairs, you know, uh, to another floor just to do their damn laundry, if they can do a washing machine up here, but they can't do a dryer until they go down three more floors, you know, it's just outright mean. And I don't understand that behavior. And if you know, or you catch anybody doing that, you can call them on it, but you should go directly to the office on that. And um, 
You know, I mean, it's I'm just outraged. And, you know, and another thing, and I know that they're going to put out a do's and don'ts. These washing machines are not made for 20 pound loads. These are small washers and they take smaller loads. You can't wash your jeans and your towels in one load. You're destroying the machines. And that's part of the problem is they are overloaded many times. And I never dry on anything except delicate cycle. I don't care what I put in the dryer. But yeah, um, you have to do smaller loads in those washing machines. But anyway, um, you know, she's she's trying as hard as I am bugging her to find out when the hell they're coming. We do know that the new, the theater um, furniture is due the second week in July. They got a delivery date on that sometime during that week. There's nine new chairs coming. So, you know, that's what I know on that. It's, it's it, but it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. And, uh, you know, it's every single person here is an equal sufferer um, under the conditions. And I'm sorry that it's happening to any of us. I truly am. Um, Jan? Oh, Pat, I didn't see your hand up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is it on? Did you turn it on? Can you hear me? Yes. There is one more uh, thing that happens with washers, and I don't think a lot of people know, especially the new people. And I know about it simply because I did it 12 years ago. So the problem is people don't understand that that washer is on a timer. And I have seen people go and say, oh, I got more room in here. I need some more stuff. They will open the washer door and down the hall they go. And like I said, I was killed of you doing that. And uh, so what they have to understand, you can put more stuff in your washer. That's fine. But don't leave the door open to do it. Because we had, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, we had a washer that that happened to. And that washer sat there for I don't know how many days because they didn't, couldn't get get anybody or whatever the case was to go empty that washer. Okay. So everybody should be aware, or maybe there should be something on the on the hall or on the wall that you've got to understand if you leave that door open, you're going to have less time for it to drain. And then it's not going to drain. Thanks. Yeah. And the other thing a lot of people don't realize, and I don't understand this about timers of washing machines at all. And I, I, I always remind myself, I'm going to ask the guy when he comes here, the timer, it's even though the timer starts when your washing says, you know, 35 minutes. So it's not counting the time that it takes to fill the machine. So that's why when you go in there, you think that the machine is not working right because it said 35 minutes and your wash isn't done yet. It doesn't count that time, which is about sometimes eight minutes or so. And it throws you off. And I don't know why it does that. I, I guess it's common, but it's weird. Okay. Anything else under good of the order, Jan? And, uh, you, know, you, you know who I'm talking about. Turns out that one of our neighbors, and I will not mention names, has taken the washing machine. I watched her. Oh, the camera up. No, I watched it. I watched Oh, um, I watched my neighbor do laundry. Now, all I can say is she is from the Philippines. That does not matter. I know, I know. Anyway, you try to explain it to her not to let them in. Right. And she doesn't get it. Well, we have to get somebody to explain it to her right. in a language she understands, Jan. Right. And she keeps lifting the lid, lifting the lid, and lift, and then the machine. Right. Yeah, exactly. And the, that's what caused the problem with the first washing machine. Well, you let me know who that is after the meeting, okay. and we'll find a way to communicate with her so she understands that that's what's causing a problem. Right. Fine. Thank you. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's good to know we can help somebody. Yeah. We want to help them. Okay. Anyone else under good of the order? In that case, who won last month? Shelly. Shelly, you get to pick a number. Shelly's going to pick one. Okay. 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 Yep. Shelly, pick a number between 1 and 33. 1 and 33. 1 and 33. 
33. That's Katie Masterson. That Katie? Yeah, Kathy Mortensen. Oh. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Kathy won the, uh, the $25 gift card from Safeway this month. Okay, so I have one last announcement, even though Fred Meyer this month. Okay. Um, the reason that I had the board meeting, the board up here for a quick little meeting at the beginning was um, Chris Lobo. If you'd like to stand for a minute, Chris. I'd like to say thank you for um, your years of service to the community. Um, it's been greatly appreciated, and I understand, um, but she has resigned effective tonight, and I have replaced her. If you would stand up, Francis, because I had the whole board here, I took that vote very quickly. So Francis is your new vice president. So first, if we can give a hand to Chris Lobo, please. Thank you, Chris, and welcome Francis to the board. We're looking forward to it. So within nothing else, a motion to adjourn is in order. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you very much.